Hyperdimension Neptune has always been a quirky series, ever since it debuted on the PS3. Its comical nature with references to the video game industry is what always set it apart from the competition. Mega Dimension Neptunia V2 is an improvement in almost every area, while at the same time opening up the series to newcomers. For probably the first time in a Neptunia game, the story has a much darker, poignant atmosphere filled with a dash of mystery. After digging up a mysterious old console, Neptune and Nepgear get, unsurprisingly, sucked into a different dimension. This time, however, they end up in a desolate city at the brink of destruction. After a little searching, they encounter the spunky and cool Izumi Tenoboshi, the CPU goddess of this place. This world is under constant attack by a mysterious being known as Dark Purple, and it's up to Izume to stop it, all while Neptune and Nepgear seek a way back home. It's been a long time coming, but finally people who are fans of the Dreamcast will be spoiled rotten with this instalment. Izume is modelled after the Sega Dreamcast, she wears stylish orange clothes, has a VMU at her wrist, and uses a megaphone as her weapon of choice. Even though the story is darker, it's not devoid of humour. Expect everything from the obligatory video game references to meta jokes which break the fourth wall. It's hard not to laugh out loud at some of the humour here. For example, Izume is fixated on being cool just like Seika was at the time, and she's accompanied by her trusty psychic Umio, who's a take on the fascinating but eerie Seaman. My name is Seaman. You don't know me, but you will. <laughs> <laughs> Though much less terrifying. Umio! Umio! I am Umio. As you can see, I am but a humble fish. The story is surprisingly well thought out, especially for a hyperdimension Neptunia title. It's particularly important considering that a huge part of the game is, in fact, the story segments and numerous comedy skits. Also, the game is absolutely huge in both duration and scale. Mega Dimension Neptunia 7 is actually made up of three individual segments. Zero Dimension Neptunia Z, Twilight of the Desperate CPU, is the first chapter and focuses on Izumi's battle and Neptune's and Nepgear's dimensional hopping. Hyper Dimension Neptunia G, the Golden Leader's Reconstructors of Game Industry, that's a long title, lets you pick one of the CPUs and have them retake back their land from a group known as the Gold Third. The final chapter, Heart Dimension Neptunia H, Trilogy Finale, Into Legend, as the events of the previous two chapters converge in an epic finale. All the game's cutscenes are presented in a visual novel style, but this doesn't mean that they're static. The game uses motion portraits in order to bring the characters to life. They blink, are fully lip-synced, and their hair, clothes, and body move realistically as they breathe. All this is done so subtly that it just looks absolutely amazing. But it doesn't make any assumptions that you've played the previous installments. All characters are introduced when they first appear, and the game tries not to overwhelm new players with too much at once. Which isn't to say that the game forgoes pandering to its fans, there's a ton of that there too. Battles are very short, usually lasting only a handful of seconds, even when not skipping battle animations. And if that's not short enough for you, you can naturally just bypass enemies and dungeons altogether. Subsegments of the game seem a bit more challenging than in previous titles. You won't need to grind for hours, but you will have to always look out for the best gear in shops and keep your party fully healed, since it's easy to get outnumbered, especially in new areas. The bosses are tougher cookies this time around. Just circling around the boss to have as little casualties as possible is no longer an effective strategy, since the bosses now move around in order to do as much damage as possible. The highlight of the show has to be the new giant battles against dark CPUs. The scale of these battles is unlike anything seen in Neptunia games before. Here your team goes up against an enemy so humongous that it floats in the distance while your team scatters around it on hovering islands. During these battles you can only use special attacks. Thankfully, however, all of your allies are in HDD mode and recover a portion of their SP gauge automatically at the start of a turn. The level design's also taken a nice step up since the previous games. You no longer walk in a linear path. Levels now branch, have shortcuts, and are even multi-leveled. There's also treasure chests scattered around the levels. You'll only be able to get a handful of them on your first time through, with the rest requiring a special item or skill. The world map has you walking across the nodes to get from one place to another. As you progress through the game, you have to build your own routes to access new areas. Once you reach the second chapter, the game opens up a lot and introduces things such as acquiring shares, investment in the areas of commerce, industry and public relations, guild quests, scouts and disc development. The graphics may not be on par with other PlayStation 4 games, but are definitely a step up in every aspect over Compile Heart's previous games. The ultra crisp 1080p visuals, smooth frame rate and stylish interface makes this series look better than ever. 
While the game may lack in technical achievement, it definitely makes up for in creativity. Enemies come in all shapes and sizes, from the classic slimes, space invaders and Mario pipes, to floating visual novel screens. Expect a variety of levels here, from run-down cities, cheery tree-filled parks, to huge gaming arcades and grandiose arenas. Mega Dimension Neptunia V2 has a pre-rad soundtrack with over 60 songs. Some of the classic tunes make a return, but there are a lot of cool yet foreboding electric techno songs too, perfect for the somewhat depressive Zero Dimension part of the game. Like always, both the Japanese and English voices are superb. However, if you opt to stick with the English voices, some less important cutscenes won't have dialogue. It might be worth to note that both the physical and digital editions of the game only contain English dubs. If you want to use the Japanese voice option, you have to download a 1.2GB free add-on. As always, this is much preferred than simply not including it as an option. It's not an exaggeration to say that Mega Dimension Neptunia V2 is among the best Compile Heart games to date. It might not innovate too much, but what it does, it does flawlessly. Long-time fans shouldn't miss out on this one, while newcomers literally haven't got a better entry point to the series. 